As climate change wreaks havoc across large-scale ecosystems, one of the most pressing environmental needs that we have today is to monitor its effects on wildlife and animals that we can't visually monitor easily. There are many new technologies that help us do this and that are coming up. And one of the easiest and most productive ones that yields a wealth of data is collection of eDNA or environmental DNA from an area. This can be done through various means, one of which is collection of airborne DNA at a place. In this video, we'll look at two studies performed in two zoos where airborne DNA was collected and the very surprising and exciting results from them. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Biologists from Europe and Canada have found that by sampling the air around animals, researchers can obtain valuable genetic material with which they can identify animals as well as ecological interactions between different species. The experiment was performed by filtering air at different locations in two zoos, one in Denmark and the other in UK. This filtering and sampling of air detected DNA from a multitude of animals. These species that the DNA represented were not just animals that lived in the zoo, but they were also from animals that lived around the zoo, as well as from animals that made up the dead meat that go into animal feed in these zoos. Such DNA is what is called environmental DNA. The findings from these two studies were published in two papers in the journal Current Biology. They were authored by two independent groups who published their similar and mutually supportive findings simultaneously. At the Copenhagen Zoo, air was sampled at three different locations. One was in the stable, another was in a closed rainforest enclosure, and a third sampling was done outdoor between open enclosures. The samplings identified 49 vertebrate species, of which 30 were mammals, 13 were birds, 4 were fish, of which 3 were used as animal feed, and 2 of them were an amphibian and a reptile. The authors of this study stated that per sample, there was anywhere from 6 to 17 species detected through DNA. The samples also included DNA from some animals that were present in surprising locations. DNA from a boa constrictor snake that was kept inside a terrarium was detected. There was even DNA detected from guppies, a type of fish that were confined to a pond in the zoo and obviously are not terrestrial. Also DNA of animals that weren't in the zoo, such as crows and even endangered hedgehogs was detected. In the other study, at the Hamilton Zoo in UK, 72 air samples were collected from 20 different locations on the grounds. 62 sequences were identified, many of them belonging to animals like cows, horses, pigs and chicken, which made up animal feed in the locations that they were sampled from. High concentrations of pig and chicken DNA were also found near lemur enclosures, which don't consume these meat. So the authors hypothesized that this DNA was found from people and equipment moving between different animal enclosures in the zoo. DNA of species from the countryside outside of the zoo, such as squirrels and ducks, were also identified as a part of the sampling. The two groups of researchers started their simultaneous work independently, but learned of each other's findings before publication. Since the two papers actually back each other's results up and replicate findings, an important part of scientific research, the authors chose to publish them simultaneously. So what do these findings imply and how are they going to help us in the future? The range of species captured in these two experiments represent a wide variety in size, behavior and individual numbers in the zoos and these are only terrestrial animals for the most part. The variety indicates that airborne eDNA capturing methods could monitor a majority of animals in a particular location. 
Of course, the closer the animals came to the equipment, the more genetic material that was captured by both studies. eDNA sampling from air samples is a biomonitoring method that is rising in popularity among biologists and conservationists due to the abundance of information it provides. Airborne eDNA capturing can aid after predator-prey interactions and a predation event or when one animal attacks another one and consumes it. It can better track long-distance migratory birds as well as flying patterns of other birds. It can also capture DNA from smaller animals including insects. Last year, a proof-of-concept study was used to capture airborne DNA to monitor terrestrial insects. As wildlife systems become rapidly and extremely chaotic owing to climate change and its alarming rate of progression, terrestrial biomonitoring techniques are expected to adapt and progress rapidly as well for accurate and timely monitoring of the ecosystems around us. eDNA techniques aid in the accuracy of understanding animal populations and dynamics and consequently impact conservation targets and methodologies. Thank <laughs> you.